Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys enjoyed the video today. We're gonna to go through the Warriors game against the Dragons at Wind Stadium where we got a massive win over the Dragons that have been dealing with a whole lot of media issues at the moment, but a win's a win. We can only win with the team that we got in front of us. And I think the boys did a really good job of showcasing how much they've grown this season. So we'll talk about that a little bit in this video. And also before I start this video, I wanna say sorry for last week not being able to make a Wild Talk video. I did touch on it in my tips video, but I was sick last week. So, uh, you know, it, was, it sucked because that was one of the big wins that I really did want to touch on over the Raiders. Uh, just amazing to see this team grow into the team we got today. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please make sure you like and subscribe down below if you enjoyed the video. Make sure you comment down below your thoughts on the team at the moment. And without further ado, let's get straight into the video. So on Friday night, the boys got a massive win over the Dragons, 48 to 18. I've I watched a couple of the game a couple of times over and over again, so I get a really good idea what really happened here. But I think the biggest thing I do want to talk about is uh, how Webby has actually built this team from the ground up and how uh, every game is usually usually just the us improving ourselves. And I think it's a mantra you hear quite a bit of times, you know, you hear it with like the origin team with uh, Billy Slater and all that sort of stuff where, you know, obviously we respect the other team. We're going to be focusing on how to beat the other team, but also we are trying to fix up all our little wrongs. So we become the most complete team that we can be. And I feel like this season's really shown that for us at the moment where defense was our biggest thing and our resilience was our biggest thing to start the season. We started to notice that this team was a bit different. The effort players and all that sort of stuff were a lot different into this team to start the season. And then we started to see the little like holes in our game. So the start of the season, I started to notice, like everyone started to notice, our holes in our game was our starts. We seemed to be getting off to slow starts. We weren't really like capitalizing on a whole lot of opportunities and all that sort of stuff. Our attacks sometimes, even though like I thought our sets do look very good and we were sticking to game plans, which is probably the biggest thing in rugby league. Like if your team, you know, goes away from a game plan that could definitely just break the team apart. Like there's a reason why you pick that game plan while you run that. Uh, I think that's one thing that Shawnee's grown into this year and all that sort of stuff. But I just think that, you know, we changed that and we slowly started to change that. After the Sharks game where we got blown out by quite a bit, we started to change that mantra a little bit and we started to get uh, the first try on the board and all that sort of stuff and you start to see the clock start to move. And then a little bit towards the middle part of the year, uh, like the middle part of where we're at right now, uh, we versed like the Roosters, we versed like, you know, the Melbourne Storm, all that sort of stuff, uh, where... You know, I think the Melbourne Storm game, our attack was really, really nice. The Roosters game, it was torrential weather. And that's all like my excuse for that game for 100% because I thought that we had so many more opportunities in that game. But it was starting to be noticeable that our attack wasn't as like crispy, like it more so of like, we weren't putting so much points on the board. I thought we created so many opportunities, but we weren't capitalizing on like making those points. And we're slowly now growing into a team where three times in a row now we've beat a team by 30 plus. So now we're starting to look at a team where we are putting a lot of points on the board and we are defending our errors. And I think that was the biggest thing that Webby has said from, uh, you know, a couple other games past and all that sort of stuff is the way he wanted our team to be. And it showed from the start of the season, no matter what, we have resilience and we defend all our errors. And that usually, like it, I'll put it in a jiu-jitsu term. When I first learned jiu-jitsu and even though like, you know, I've been uh, like taking a rest from jiu-jitsu for a little bit lately, uh, focusing on my YouTube craft and other sort of things, but I still try to go down there as much as I can when I can, uh, you know, hopefully return to it this week and all that. But there's a big thing in jiu-jitsu where I think Gordon Ryan says it really well and like that sort of stuff is where when you first go to your classes, you end up learning how to defend things. And I think it's the best way to learn jiu-jitsu is learn to be uh, comfortable in the most uncomfortable places because you will be put there uh, more times than not unless you become like a very high skilled person in jujitsu where you can be able to get on top and you can work your game but that only comes if you get comfortable in the worst like places possible on your back on your like in places where you don't want to be like stuck in submissions if you're comfortable in those places and you understand you can get out of those submissions and all that sort of stuff, you're going to try and push the ball. Your attack def definitely helps from that because you've got the confidence to know that even if I do miss and I get put in a worse position, I can get myself out of that. And it makes a really dangerous jiu-jitsu player. So I feel like this is what's happening with our NRL team now is even though we do concede a couple of tries at the moment, it's something we do need to fix up on. But I feel like with our errors, we are starting to defend our errors a lot better. We had seen that to the start of the season. We got resilience in our team to where if one of the boys create an error or something happens, we just tap them on the shoulder and go, listen, like we're just going to defend it and we we'll move past it and all that sort of stuff. So it really is oppressing me at the moment what Webby's doing with his team. And I just want to give that 
like a little bit of a segment there to my full credit to Webby and just shows how this Warriors team is now like it's growing long term. It's not just a short term play where we just plug and play players and just go and bang, bang, bang. This whole team, like I'm in New South Wales Cup, we've had a couple of losses in a row now in New South Wales Cup, but our New South Wales Cup team still playing really, really good footy, uh, consistent footy. And our NRL team is benefiting from that too. So I do want to shout out Webby for that. I think it's just amazing from a Warriors fan. I haven't seen our team play like this or even just schedule out a season the way we have where we're just filling in holes. So towards when we come to the finals, we are the most complete team that we can be, hopefully, if we make the finals this year. So also, I want to give my thoughts when I was actually in this game. So when I was actually like watching this game overall, I feel like this is probably the first season or the first time in the season. Even when I started noticing when I was messaging back, uh, back and forth with a couple of my mates, uh, watching this game and all that sort of stuff is this is the first season I really felt settled as a Warriors fan where like I feel like I know my team is going to stay in this contest and we're not going to see a massive blowout and I feel like you know if that does happen later on the track maybe that's a one-off game but also it's like it would worry me being a Warriors fan just knowing the past and all that sort of stuff the way we play but this is the first time you know when Sloan went through that try where he just slipped between Pompey and all that sort of stuff where Pompey thought he had enough speed to cover on that edge and Sloan he started to be really really good like he was real damaging in this game in like big moments, especially on that edge. But even when that happened, I still had this confidence about me. I don't know. Like, it's also like, you know, we versed the Dragons over the weekend. They've had a whole lot of media scrutiny and all that sort of stuff. But I also just want to touch on that where it's like more of the thing of like, when I was watching this game, I didn't feel like that. It's been happening for the last couple of weeks. Even when we were like with the Dolphins game, it was 8-6. Uh, it was really, really close all the way through up to where we started to blow them out. I was just sitting there going, all right, I see the game plan building. I see Shawnee like turning the clogs over, like everything, the kicks in the corners, everything's starting to move. Like our game plan's there. If we just stick sturdy, we hold the ball because we had a couple of errors in this game that really put us in the back foot. But also just when those uh, errors happen, I was like, all right, I know the boys can defend from here and nothing really looked like other than the Sloan try and a couple of other moments and all that sort of stuff. Nothing really looked like where it was like, we were really like bad in defense in this game. So all credit to Webby there as well, where it's just like, I feel like, you know, I put it comment down below if you really feel it that same way with the Warriors this season, because it's been the first time in a little while where I've just sat down and just gone, I know the boys can actually pull this game out and just like play to their game plan and play really good footy. So I do also want to touch on my negatives in this game and then we'll go for my positives and we'll finish this video on the players that uh, played really well or the statistical best players in this game. So overall, my negatives in this one is definitely errors. Like we do need to clean up on the errors. At one point this season, we were the best team in like not conceding handling errors and all that sort of stuff. Now we're starting to slide. I think we're around like top four, top five or whatever, so which is still really good. But 11 errors is probably not where we want to be as a Warriors team and all that sort of stuff. And I feel like that's now because we are starting to like really feel our attack. Webby did touch on it in the uh, press conference that he felt like we were a little bit more flamboyant in this game and we just did things that we didn't really need to do. If we just rolled through our sets, could have been looking a lot better and all that sort of stuff. But it was like really, really nice to see our sets actually hit hands and everything really went well. Like we just saw like Dallin Witten, Izzy Lesnack score four tries and Rocco Berry having real like everyone had an amazing game on that edge. Sometimes it doesn't always need to happen that way. And you see that with teams like the Broncos after the weekend, we all saw that the Broncos got really desperate. There seemed to be a team that want to score from like the 60 on the other side of the field. They want to score from the 30. They want to score everywhere where the Warriors seem to have like, you know, we want to get to a really good field position, then we can really make it play. And I hope that we continue to really grow on that, especially with key pieces like Luke Metcalf and players like that, who is a young, exuberant player. We see it with Reese. Reese wants to score all the time with the Broncos. Uh, but you know, when we have we just that that youthfulness, we need to turn that back a little bit and just use that youth use uh, use that youthfulness more so within our twenty and our thirty and all that sort of stuff because that's where really we can make it count. Where you know, back in our fifty and all that sort of stuff, when that thing doesn't really go its way, we put ourselves on the back foot. So. That's one negative. As I was saying before, some sloppy sets didn't really look too good sometimes. Uh, but, you know, we had a couple of like, you know, Wade Egan went off with a little HIA for the middle there. But then again, Sirenin filled in really, really well in that hooker spot. But sometimes, yeah, our sloppy sets sometimes. Uh, a couple of those missed tackles, uh, loose missed tackles in this game, uh, I really do want to point it down. Like, you know, Sloney's one was kind of a very loose one. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Ho like the boys ended up getting back on the horse there. But still, uh, maybe in some areas we do need to tighten up on in our defense, which we can only get better at. And the near core of Sinbin, I think we all know that, like, that was definitely a negative. Uh, unfortunately, with near core, he's facing three to four weeks in suspension. It really sucks because it wasn't that big of a, like, you know, like it obviously was head contact. It is what it is. We're seeing that getting Sinbin sometimes. We see it not get Sinbin sometimes. 
But Nia Corey has been pinned for it now for a couple of weeks in a row and all that sort of stuff. And it sucks to see him face the suspension of such a, like, I don't want to say nothing tackle, but you know what I mean? Like, it's just because it's like loading from other tackles. So definitely a negative there. We just need to watch out with that sort of stuff. But I know people like Joshy Curran can come into the team and we get Mitch Barnett's back soon. So all that sort of stuff. Tamari Martin comes back in our team. We can fill in those spots now. And this is what I'm saying. This is the first time in a Warriors team where I'm like, all right, we can fill in our spots. I'm not that confident as a Warriors player. I'm not that type of guy to be like, our team's going to smash your team, but I'm definitely that confident in a game where I'm like, I know we're not going to get blown out here. It's just whether we can make things happen and we can win this game. And you know me, I just like to be a positive guy. So positives in this game is definitely snatching opportunities. This is the first game in like, you know, the last three games, we are snatching all our opportunities. We're starting to put points on the board and we're looking really slick in attack. And I know Luke Metcalf's really, really like, he's starting to really find his own in that number six role and all that sort of stuff. And I'm not too sure how long uh, Tamari Martin is going to be out for, whether he's going to be back next week or who knows because uh, he was supposed to be back this week from what uh, NRL casual casualty wars sort of sort of said but you know we'll have to see how that goes but tomorrow will probably be a whole in that added dimension so maybe Luke can uh, still keep finding himself in New South Wales Cup uh, those boys are our future Luke and Volkman they're definitely our future but you know that would be really good for them just to keep learning their craft and that sort of stuff and just kill the New South Wales Cup as well because we're in a really good position in New South Wales Cup to make something happen there we're scoring at will as I was just touching on before our big thing is our scramble defense is my number three point there is just our scramble defense at the moment is just second to none like there was a moment there where uh the uh, the dragons had a stripped uh, zach lomax had a flick pass and then we had wade egan our hooker cover on an edge there uh push everyone over and just big moments like that where we're covering we're scrambling for each other it's really really good to see and like you know as a queensland fan we see it in origin but they're the big key moments in football games that you want to see that's where you see effort that's where you actually win games is in certain things like that and defending our errors that's a big thing we had 12 errors in this game uh, we only conceded 18 points in this game so you know all that sort of stuff i just want to say like you know i'm really proud of the boys the way we defend ourselves we like defend our line as best we can 18 points is still a little bit much you know all that sort of stuff but like still like you know i felt like that we were turning the dragons around at will at moments you know the dragons have one try off a kick from memory that the slony try that went through uh, I think Sloney had a couple of really big moments there, but defending our errors was definitely a big one. And quickly going through the players that I noticed in this game, my statistical uh, statistical best players in this game and all that sort of stuff. So a massive game from Sean Johnson. So one try, two try assists, 82 run meters, one line break, 15 tackles, two misses. Definitely a big stat I always want with Shawnee. He's not missing a big bunch of tackles. And 360 kick meters. Amazing game from Shawnee there. AFB. Now we're starting to have a conversation. He's got to be the top three uh, front rower in the competition right now. I really do honestly believe that. 193 meters, 60 post-contact meters, two tackle breaks, three offloads, one line break assist, 31 tackles, zero miss. He was absolutely bonkers in this game and seeing boys like Wires Up and all that sort of stuff, uh, Wires Up podcast, go check him out, uh, where he was, you know, obviously I did notice in the game too, we started to use like his passing game and all that sort of stuff. We put Adam Fennell Blake on an edge. We have done that in the past, but to this extent, all that sort of stuff, we had that really nice try. I think it was to the Rocco Berry try or was one of Dallin Watini's Lesniak try where we ran Adam Fennell Blake on an edge and he slick ball playing and it just opened up so much on our field. So great to see Adam Fennell Blake just keep killing it. He's an amazing player to have in our squad. Tohu Harris, 161 meters, 62 post-contact meters, two tackle breaks. He's our spiritual leader. He just keeps chugging along. He's like a diesel train. He's amazing. Dylan Walker is definitely someone I do want to touch on too much. Like, you know, I love his injection into the game. I love that we have him coming off the bench. It's definitely his better position for me in my opinion where he's just leg speed he just adds a whole new dimension to the uh, to the team when he comes on uh, especially you know when we have uh, a couple of players like you know Tohu and all that sort of stuff they chug through the work they got really nice passing game and the next minute you get Dylan Walker on he just runs in and he's just got a whole lot of speed through the middle and he ends up finding his front more not more times than not against other bigger opponents so it's really good to see uh, 97 meters from him one try assist one line break assist and 16 tackles with one miss in the middle really love to see that from him Chance Nickel clock stag two try one 198 run meters, seven tackle breaks, one line break, three line break assists. He is our fullback. He's amazing. When RTS comes over, RTS move into the centers. Chancey, just keep up this form, bro, because the effort plays that you have is just filtering through the whole team. Dallin Watini's Lesniak, amazing game from him. He was fucking mental. His finishing ability is like second to none at the moment. He's so amazing. Four tries from him, one try assist, 227 run meters. Two tackle breaks, five line breaks, and that mullet just flapping in the wind. 
Rocco Berry, baby Joey Manu. I know you guys may not like me saying that, but he's got that sort of prospect to him. You just see the movement in him and all that sort of stuff. He's starting to grow. You know, he's still like learning the craft of rugby league, but I'm really excited for this kid's future. One try, two try assists, 72 run meters, four tackle breaks, two line break assists. Obviously, the try assists and all that sort of stuff kind of inflated because putting it out to Dallin Matisse Lesniak on the end of our lines. But I did feel like that I noticed Rocco Berry have a really nice game, finding his front more than often than not, and just putting himself in really good moments. He did not muff anything. He played a really solid game there. And Jackson Ford, one try, 113 run meters, three tackle breaks, 32 tackles, two misses on the edge. And I think this guy's been like the whole thing of like, where well, we watch our team. Webby, like this shows how big of an effect Webby has. We never saw Jackson Ford really have his name in lights when that's all that stuff before he comes to the club. I was kind of like, you know, when I saw Jackson Ford, I was like, oh, maybe he's a New South Wales Cup sort of player. Or, you know what I mean? Like maybe he's like a depth sort of play. Nah, he's starting to become a uh, lockdown, that edge uh, role and all that sort of stuff and just chugs through the work. I love seeing him out there and just... Uh, competing on every single play. We need players like that throughout our whole team. So we do need to regroup. We are playing the Rabbitohs at home coming up this weekend. I'm really excited for this game. Obviously, the big sort of talking points in that, we're probably going to be out without near Corey, but, you know, we I feel like that we're going to have someone like tomorrow and all that, Mitch Barnett and all that sort of stuff come back into our lineup. Obviously, no Luttrell for the Rabbitohs for a little bit now. Cody Walker didn't have his best game at the weekend, so hopefully, you know, at the moment with the Rabbitohs playing the way they are, we can maybe, you know, take... we got a full stadium over there. Everything's sold out. Uh, hopefully we really bring it to him coming up this weekend and make us all happy again. If we go back to back to back to back, we are in really good stead to really make something happen in this, in this final series this year. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please make sure you like and subscribe down below. Thank you so much for always supporting my channel. I appreciate every single one of you guys. Comment down below your thoughts. Thank you. Peace out.